That was my nice, like, super loud cough before. I couldn't hear it at all. Yeah, I muted it. Oh. <laughs> it would have, it would have absolutely like caused permanent damage to your hearing. But, uh, <laughs> my mic picked that up. Um, oh. man, uh, we haven't recorded in a little bit, so um, I'm excited to hear what you've been watching as of late. Firstly, I feel like I've watched everything, which is obviously not true because I had a week off of work. So I watched the internet, the whole internet. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm totally caught up on The Last of Us. I am not. I <gasps> still... Um, I I have to watch the episode where they give the backstory and all of wow. that. Like, I know what happens. So Of course. So this episode is... In the video game, we don't get that in the main video game. This is what's called downloadable DLC. Yes, I DLC. Saw it online. <laughs> yes, it is DLC or a downloadable content. And um you usually have to pay extra. Some game studios don't make you pay extra. It's this whole thing. Started back in the early 2000s with something called horse armor. Where a video game studio wanted you to pay ten dollars to make your horse wear armor and it had no in game effects whatsoever. And that was our dark descent into terribleness. Downloadable as content. Downloadable content. So which leads us to this episode of The Last of Us. Um was it good? Did you like it? I thought it was really good. I thought it was sweet. The internet some of the internet disagreed. Mm-hmm. But I liked it. I love that they're putting like semi-famous actors in episodes for an episode yeah that's that's <laughs> i'm a fan that's cool um yeah i uh i just was not ready emotionally for mm-hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> um that show and i just i know i need to catch up on it so do you is it just a complete flashback or do you see Joel and Ellie in the present time? You see a smidgen of Joel and Ellie. Okay. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, sure. Or like you, I know what happened. I mean, it has I, to do with like her finding the needle and thread. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the, that's the end of it. So in the video game, he doesn't get stabbed. They're at like the uh um the what do you call it college and mm-hmm. you get in this pew pew gunfight <laughs> and joel gets pushed off of this like second story balcony and like lands on some rebar that goes through him and it ellie it's like this whole thing mm-hmm. um and you pretty much end up in the same instance the next episode it'll it'll be really Don't interesting tell me. to see what they do with it but i can't wait to hear what uh, you think about it. I, man, <laughs> I got really hooked. I saw last weekend I was uh, watching my grandma while my dad was out somewhere and I was like, oh, PBS. <laughs> I have the uh, PBS stream add on with uh, uh, <laughs> Amazon streaming and Mm -hmm. because i like because you get all the ken burns documentaries and i've been watching uh, you know baseball and everything like that but i watched that day like three or four episodes of the great american recipe and Mm. it's a cooking show with um do you remember tiffany she was on like an earlier season of top chef yes i do yeah she's one of the judges and it's all these just regular people like the first episode's like, all right, do a um do a recipe with that connects you that gives you memories of your mom or something mm-hmm. like that. It's so nice. Everyone's like super cool. There's like this Italian guy who's from some New England town with a very thick accent and he <laughs> he's talking about his big Italian family, and then there's this like Orange Is County. It Pat? Is no. it a New England? Is it cat? No, <laughs> no, but great, great tie-in. And there's this like Vietnamese guy from Orange County, and he's like making like bun mi and like. Do we know him? No, we don't. Unfortunately, 
<laughs> um, but it's like it's super cool. I I really enjoy it. Um, the nice. other one of the other judges is from Master Chef Junior. He's the guy with the glasses, kind of the taller, big guy. Um, I don't really watch Master Chef. Uh, Master Chef Junior is the only one I watch because I like seeing the kids cook. But because he's uh, nice to them, I watched a little mm-hmm. bit of of like one season of it. Yeah, I enjoy that they're nice to the kids. <laughs> yeah, but then again, you know, you probably get enough of the cooking with. The... Oh, Graham Elliot. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it it was it was pretty cool. Um, other TV shows like I. Nah, I did start I, watching Friday Night Lights again. I mean, I started a rewatch. Okay, I finished Gilmore Girls again. I watched. Has your opinion on? Life. Has your opinion on Gilmore Girls changed at all since the last time you binged it? Um, yeah, I. I mean, I haven't ever binged the entire series before. Okay. Um. Yeah, there are some slightly outdated things in it, like. Yeah, you're. I mean, that's a mi- that's an early to mid two thousand show, right? Yeah, even like the so, year yeah. in the life thing they did had a little bit of like, there's just like a little bit of like fat phobic type stuff that they do yeah. in it that is bothersome. Um, but overall, I like it, and I liked the year in the life show a lot better mm-hmm. the second time I watched it. Maybe because I, I had just watched all of it. I didn't know about a year in the life. I knew yeah, about so the, that was when was that? Maybe like 2016. It says okay, so seven years ago, which would be like almost ten years after the show ended. Yeah. And so you sort of catch up with them. It's really nothing. It adds pretty much nothing to the story. It's just more time with those characters, you know. Yeah, exactly. So how uh, how much of Friday Night Lights have you watched? I watched full. Four episodes, I think. Okay. It's pretty good. I, man. <laughs> that first episode is so good. Yeah. I mean. The best part about the episode is when they played Devil Town. Oh. Was that second episode? <laughs> no. It's just that's such definitely a good the song. First one. It's so perfect. Is it? Is it the Connor Oberst version or is it? Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> Bright eyes. Yeah. Um, I, I remember vividly watching that for the first time, seeing that first mm-hmm. episode going, oh man, this is going to be, <laughs> this is incredible. I always tell people I wish that I had never watched it so I could watch it for the first time. Yeah. I, that's one of my, um, that that's definitely one of my uh, favorites. That t- for that answer, that I like. You know, Breaking Bad is one of mine because it was just such a thing for me. And <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just I really. Who, oh yeah, explosions in the sky. Did the <laughs> <laughs> yeah the theme? Yeah. So- is it the theme song? Yeah, it's the theme song. Do, I would step. Do, do, do. My, also, that show just shameless about their their uh, at, uh or their uh oh man why is it not coming to me it, they just show chilies all the time and Applebee's oh product placement yeah product placement it we, <laughs> oh man that the first season of that show that was when they were still doing twenty some odd episodes a season and yeah. It, that's, I just remember back to that time. That's just a lot. And for an hour a, show, yeah. it's just so good, though. Um, it's very intense. Like, that's how Gilmore Girls is. Every season's like 22, 24. But it's not – I mean, I still cry at every at every episode because I cry at everything I watch. Yeah. But, it, um, but like, Pride Night Lights is, like, not funny. I mean, there's funny moments. There's no, it's like the opposite the, of Gilmore Girls. It's like, but there's no like levity. Very serious. There it's, isn't. Everything's so heavy, deep. Uh, Kyle Chandler is still just the best. Really good. Um, so this week for my film class, we've been watching the Indiana Jones movies because we're doing like, mm-hmm. oh, Steven Spielberg and John Williams and this and that, and um, 
the comment was brought up today that how is Indiana Jones getting these women? He has no Riz. Now, what's Riz? So, I'm so glad it's. I'm like, old. I'm it's, not. No, 16. I am. I am old as well. Riz. Um, I'm gonna say it tomorrow. Whatever. <laughs> that, whatever it is, I'm yes. gonna use this tomorrow. That's um, cool. So I didn't know at first, but they explained it. Uh, Riz is another word for charisma. Wow. So like the ability to pick up the a member swag. Yeah, swag, like suave, suave, you know, whatever. And Did I was like they know that it stood for yes. charisma? Yes. Okay. That is the one that is their generation's word. And they got parents it's a big word on TikTok. Um Riz, just R I S. R I Z Z. Oh, well, that's misleading. Yeah, it's one of, it's very misleading. I was so, like Riz, like Rizzo from Greece. <laughs> exactly. I'm not that old, but you know. <laughs> um, I feel this generation. A tangent. I feel this generation has never seen Greece, and they didn't grow up with it, and that's just very indicative of where they're heading. Because <laughs> I feel, so as a young child, I watched that movie a lot. A lot, um, me too. Over and over. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But I was like, guys, wh- what do we? I paused it. I go, what are you talking about? Indian Jones has no Riz. And they explained it to me, and I go, so you're telling me <laughs> you don't think Indiana Jones is charismatic? Like you don't think he should be? Well, and one of the one of the students in my class goes, yeah, and Harrison Ford isn't attractive. What is going? And I was I was like, I finally had to go up to the podium. I go, what are we talking about? And I. <laughs> like pulled up pictures of like Han Solo and like Harrison Ford in the 80s where he had that like photo shoot where he had that beard and yeah, like I mean not now he's 87 years old or something Oh no, yeah like, exactly That would be that's probably like what I think of that is us saying like Sean Connery is not attractive because he is yeah. really really old to yeah, us but like to somebody sure. else they'd be like no he was But they were saying in the context of Indiana Jones where he's like you know he's like 30 uh, let's say 30 if, okay. to make us feel better but I was just like you guys are you guys are crazy You're dead wrong You you just <laughs> wrong um But yeah so we've been watching those um teach their own I, I started a new podcast that is rewatching Lost for me. Oh, um, good, cool. And I am feeling feelings about Lost because they are going in depth about these, and I'm remembering so many things about it, like the reason why I hate Jack and Kate. I hate Kate. Why? And Jack, yeah. I love Sawyer. Me too. And Saeed was kind of mm-hmm. all right. Rip. Oh, man, it, I'm like, do I want to go back? And then I was like, no, I'll just let this these guys do it for me. <laughs> I don't think I would remember the episodes well enough to listen to a podcast like that. Like the the two podcasts I really like are a Sex and the City podcast and a Daria podcast because I've seen all those episodes yeah. hundred like a hundred times, so Lo- I don't have to like rewatch. To know I what talking about. I have a very vivid memory of all those lost episodes because that is the first TV show I was like invested in where i did theories and like red stuff and like the entertainment weekly blog every week had this huge long article and we would always talk about it i was just i would that was like the show for me that like just like opened the gates of like oh like tv's cool (laughs) um Man, that so I'm going to be talking about lost a lot as we cool. uh, as, as in our in our text threads and uh, on this <laughs> show. But um, as you said earlier, uh, I don't know. You said something about cat being from the east coast. Yeah, that that would have been a better segue. What a anyway, segue. Um, so this episode, or uh, so episode six. Um, sleeping with the enemy. Sleeping with man. <sighs> I it what so what what did you think overall at the very at the very beginning of this episode? Like, what did you think about this episode out, overall? I should say the episode overall, not yeah, the beginning. Of not the, the beginning. We'll get into the beginning in a little bit. I thought it took a 
it was less, um, it was heavier. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel as happy watching it. Like it wasn't as, there were definitely funny moments, but it, there was a darkness in this episode. (laughs) I, I was surprised at how long, how much they spent with the crew. If that, that, if that makes sense at all, because usually we get a lot of the charter guests as well. And oh, less, char- yeah, I see what you're saying. We were below deck more. Yes, we were much more below deck on this one. Um, but so th- some of the through lines of the episode were, you know, Kat f- wanting to find a new roommate. Um, and, and that's kind of the big drama right now. So we open with Adrian kind of aggressively waking up pro- a probably hungover cat um <laughs> if i may and immediately like shakes her awake and goes captain needs to see your prescription and cat's like uh okay like <laughs> like if some <sighs> is there a time where adrian stops being her boss like on off hours is she not her boss or she's still her boss but like they should be able Adrian shouldn't be telling her what to do yeah hours but I guess the chiefs the chief and the lead or the chief and the bosun do set like uh like wake up time like your start or work start time so like if you're starting work at eight Mm -hmm. you choose when you get up but you better be like on deck or Uh, you're in the galley or whatever you're supposed to be at the time Okay. If it's a work day, which it always is a work day. So pretty much. Cat and uh so Adrian starts speaking in her talking head about the quote unquote alliance that can't I Kat wrote down and, that too. Cat and Sam have. Um <sighs> This was a very uh, half of me this episode felt really big sympathy like deep sympathy for adrian me too and then the other half i was like i know you could just just be so much better at managing people <laughs> i'm getting like some spectrum vibes from adrian yeah like she uh-huh. doesn't quite know or just immaturity i'm not really sure but like she doesn't know how to be a leader without being like really strict and stern she can't like read the room or yeah, like she doesn't use emotion when she's. Thank you in for work mode. that's that's such a good addition. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because she really does not come off. She comes off as somebody, yeah, who's inexperienced at managing people and talking to people. But like you said, it's that little bit of spectrumy kind of like I don't like. It's just very concrete. She Mm -hmm. does not budge. She is not, um, she's not like willing to like bend the situation Mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's, it's kind of intense. Inflexibility. Yes. Um, so they start going over the charter guests (laughs) and, uh, one of them's name likes to go by Papa. Mm -hmm. Um, and it turns out Papa made his money. Um, well, the charter guests made yeah, his money. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the main, get, the yeah, primary, the primary. So the, the primary I wrote down <laughs> further down here. Well, we'll get to that. But Papa, he likes to go by Papa and they were commenting on like what he likes to eat. He likes Doritos. And apparently the sticking and point, lucky charms. the sticking point with cat was the lucky charms. And she kind of like gave a face, and I was like, "Lucky Charms are delicious, okay?" Like, but when you if you charted a yacht, <laughs> okay, for okay, one I mean, one night, yeah, do you have to have Doritos and Lucky Charms on your one night no. on a luxury yacht? Like, no, I would you just can go home <laughs> and then eat those things. Like, what did you want? Like, it, it would be very. Uh... Something out of the ordinary, special. <laughs> it would be very. Uh, what was that? The lobster taco energy that that guy ate was just the lobster just the ketchup meat. and lobster. <laughs> yeah, ketchup and lobster energy. Oh man! Like he, someone who doesn't eat anything else, should be like, I only eat. Yeah, blah, give blah, me, blah. give me the Lucky Charms or Doritos. 
Um, but like weird. So <laughs> the next scene, we have uh, Lee meeting with uh, Adrian and Alex in this. <laughs> Is this where Alex sick, walks in with his sunglasses just, on? It's the greatest moment I have seen in the show yet, and I don't know if they'll top it. This they will eventually, but yeah. Sick ass burn. <laughs> Lee doesn't even fucking look up from what he's doing. He's looking down at his screen. Alex comes in with his aviators on, and Lee goes, Alex, the sun, the sun ain't shining yet. In <laughs> Oh, okay. And he takes off the aviators. I don't. I don't know how that will, will that'll be topped. Lee absolutely decimated this guy from the <laughs> get go. Like, <laughs> step, you know, Lee saw them out of the corner of his eye and was like, "I'm just gonna ruin this fucking guy's day." It, <laughs> like that was mind game stuff. Like, oh, man, oh is there? Because <laughs> you know, like he radioed them. He wants to be Johnny on the spot. He was just outside, not thinking. Man, it was the funny. Ugh, Lee is <sighs> Lee's the best. It only gets better from here with Captain Lee. He's the best. Tell you, Cat <laughs> also had a really good line. Very, like first thing she said in the episode after Adrian woke her up was, "I just want to strangle her and make it look like an accident." <laughs> <laughs> well, remember she uh, <laughs> is good at rockets, so she studied no, rockets. Oh no, wait! Said it. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. That was Sam. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> Sam is good at rockets. <laughs> Sam though, is and good at rockets. Basically, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> because oh man. <laughs> so okay, so I never even thought about this. So the weather is bad. So they can't yacht. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. have to stay on 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 the dock. How pissed off would you be if you're spending all this money and you're just like, no, we're just going to go on the dock and I would not out. be happy. No, I would be so pissed. They did pull out, you know, all the what they call the water toys, and they're not talking about floaties like no. jet skis. Do you? Have you ever been on a jet ski? Do you uh, enjoy a jet ski? My family owned a jet ski for a while. Um, they're fun, from what I remember. Yeah. Believe it or not, I have ridden jet skis. Whoa. Because my high school boyfriend, whom we both yeah. know, uh-huh. his family did a lot of boating and jet skiing. So on some vacations I went on with them, we did some jet skiing. Wow. Fun. That's, that sounds fun. Yeah. The jet ski part is fun. Yeah. Um, I just remember my dad going way too fast with me on the back. And I'm like, oh, dad, you're going Aww. real fast. He's like, no, nah, we're fine. And we hit a big wake and we both like crashed. And like, <laughs> like I had like a headache. And I'm like, oh, I don't feel good. Capsize. Yeah. It was. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of. I remember when we got that thing and we used it like four times and that's about mm-hmm. it. My parents got a divorce so we never like really did <laughs> jet skis again. <laughs> so funny. That's why I never did jet skis again because my <laughs> boyfriend and I broke up yeah. for the best. Just dying love getting in the way of water <laughs> activity. Sports. Oh man. But uh so, <laughs> so is level it, zero, level ten. Yeah, right. So okay. <laughs> so okay. So what happens so my notes are a little jumbled, so <laughs> Okay. So the the charter the primary owns yeah. a Yeah, okay. A bed bug removal Exterminate service. Exterminate removal service. And he decides he's going to bed do a <laughs> bed do, bug check on a, all of the boats on the luxury yacht. So, okay. So if you are a bed bug, you're in the bed bug biz. You're in big, you're a big bed bug. <laughs> BBB. Yeah. BBB. <laughs> are you, this guy is just living in his, living in a prison that he created everywhere he goes. <laughs> This guy, I, he's probably changing shoes everywhere he goes. Ooh, like he did shoe he, bug. Oh, I mean, they try. They you could tra- track track him home, you know. Ew. And like he itchy, gave, instantly itchy. 
and he was like, uh, I'll look, I'll look at your guys' beds. Uh, no, you know, I could, I could, and he was giving them the once over. <laughs> and I just imagine him like going to Vegas and like, no, we got to check all the beds. <laughs> like, I know. I, I, if he's doing it on the luxury yacht, he's doing it. He's doing it Vegas. or ev- anywhere, everywhere. Um, I can't imagine how horrible that is working in that industry, the big, the bed bug industry. Um, also, can we talk about how these guys just wore their fucking b- big bed bug, like whatever shirts? Yeah, it was on- product placement. Product placement. It's, it's like, uh, all right, man. Like, I guess. And that other guy, his friend had the big orange patch on the white shirt. It's like, you don't have to wear your work shirts when you're on the show. That's a little. No, you're on vacay. Yeah, come on, guys. This is luxury. <laughs> this is supposed to be luxurious. <laughs> Um, just ask Ben and man, Adrian just constantly talking to people terribly. So cat finally has had enough and the cat's doing laundry, I think. And cat's talking head is just finally like, I need to switch rooms. (laughs) She does not want Adrian as a roommate anymore. And I don't blame her. No, I don't either. If someone talked to me like that and then in my off hours I had to go and sleep above that person, I, mm-hmm. get out of here. No, thank you. That that brings me to a question I was going to ask you, which is if you were doing this, would mm-hmm. you want to be in a top bunk or a bottom bunk? Bottom. I'm a I'm a bottom guy. I'm very <laughs> I'm self I'm tall. I'm, no, I prefer a bottom bunk too, but yeah. did, did you always, or did that change when you were like 16 years old? Like, Oh, that changed. Like when you were like 10 as... years old, you wanted yeah. to be in a top bunk, No, right? well, oh. okay, okay. <laughs> 10-year-old no. Jared was a little tall. <laughs> he oh. didn't really fit in most kids' bed bunks at, oh, okay. at bunk beds as a 10-year-old, but yeah, I've always, I always wanted it, but... My brother got the top bunk usually. He was little. Because he was little. I fell out of my friend's top bunk when I was, I don't know how old. It might have been like a middle school. Oh, no. I just sort of like, you know, woke up, forgot I was sleeping six feet off the ground. I think I would have a lot of those moments, which I'm kind of paranoid about. I would probably get up to stand up and just crash. If you're Um, on the bottom bunk in that little room, they're always going to be stepping on your bed. Sitting oh, on your bed. I didn't Don't you even think? think about that. Yeah, to get up on the second bunk, you gotta. Oh, people are gonna be stepping on my bed. No, thank you. But I still don't want to be on the top. Bunk. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Well, because the ceiling is what in your face, six yeah. inches from your face. No, thank you. Yeah. I, I'm a little claustrophobic. I did see a <laughs> well, later then maybe season. Maybe don't work on below deck. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Yeah. <laughs> in general. Um. I wrote, uh, I took some, so Papa made his money as, uh, writing a book on how to pick up women. And I wrote, oh. pop up is it, Papa is a pickup artist. Gross. Very gross. Um, He's not, he doesn't have any Riz. N- no, no Riz at all. His, and neither uh, does his fiance. Fiance at the, yeah, and their at, photos did not look like them. No, not at all. Their photos on their, their yeah. preference sheets. Those preference. What would you? What would be on your preference sheet? What would? I think I would just write things that like I don't like. Like okay. Like to me, like if a good chef you... is making my food, I'll eat yeah. whatever. But like I'm not uh-huh. gonna. I'm not gonna request chicken. No. But I'm also not gonna eat something dunked in cilantro and curry for myself. You know. Okay. Like I might yeah. say, like I don't prefer no these curried kinds of items. No Indian Thai food. Mm-hmm. But like I'll eat anything. Like don't serve me game meat. Don't <laughs> serve me anything other than like the traditional meats. I don't want. That's more what I would say. It wouldn't be like Give me please the tradi- serve me bacon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who I must have steak. Like I wouldn't say that. No. I definitely wouldn't say please You're ensure like, I have. But Lucky charms and Doritos. You're not going to want to like venison or veal no, or anything no. like that on your charter. I'm not. I'm not. But they like chefs would do that. Yeah, or, like, absolutely. Lamb. I don't eat lamb, so I wouldn't. I'd like please don't serve me a lamb chop unless yeah. it's on a VHS 
of Sherry Lewis. Oh, God, that song is stuck in my head now. No, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think – I'm trying to think what would be on mine. I don't really like overly fishy fish if that's a cra- – I mean, that might be a crazy statement, but no. – um, I'm just thinking of all, all the food that I've seen so far that Chef Ben has put out has looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not the the lobster ketchup notwithstanding. Um, that wasn't his choice. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Nor was it his choice in this episode no. to make some pancakes for Papa's fiance. Okay, yeah. Can we – let's talk yep. about that. Yeah. Do you think Sam so messed? Sam, a, yeah. Let's let's. Papa was at the breakfast table alone eating mm-hmm. breakfast for some reason, and he said his fiance would be up soon. Could he, Chef Ben, make her some pancakes? Yeah. So Sam asked Ben to make her pancakes. Mm-hmm. When the pancakes were done, Sam brought them upstairs, and no one was at the table. No. So she went down to the bedroom and let them know that the pancakes were ready. And, and then Ben was wearing this sideways Kangol hat, throwing <laughs> a temper tantrum over the whole thing. An absolute hissy fit that I think was a little ridiculous. It was. He was upset that the pancakes were going to get cold. No one was eating them. And it was apparently Sam's fault because he should she shouldn't have ordered them if she wasn't sitting at the table. Which is, which is I get it, bro. You just cleaned up. Like, you didn't want to make the breakfast. He hates making breakfast for people because he's basically a line cook at that point, quote, mm-hmm. unquote. And <laughs> it's like, listen, bud. You it's your job. Just, it's your job. You're getting paid. Much like Sam, it's your job. Yeah. Much like Sam, it is your job. And, um, <sighs> buddy, like, I, I think he was in the wrong. Yeah, I think so, too. Um. So uh, at so, at some point, um, <laughs> they decided because they are docked, they can't go anywhere, and it's just like kind of you know tooling around the little area and having fun, I guess on on this boat. They want to have a wedding between Papa and his fiance. <laughs> I hate. Let's just say say it right now for the listeners. I hate that I'm saying Papa. I think it. I feel very weird. Say, so, think it. What's his real name? Nick. I have no idea. I I've, looked it up. <laughs> but uh, Papa wants. You know, the idea is for them to get married, and they decide to. And, and Kat is looking at them with this look on her face, like, "Oh, please no, please do not request this wedding," <laughs> and basically they do anyway they do anyway and lee's lee's arguments like basically all i gotta do is this you guys are the ones that have to put this fucking wedding together and that they do and and they do in like (sighs) it actually yeah dave takes them ring shopping (laughs) which did you see in the previously on that dave's boyfriend proposed to him on like skype did not see that yeah must have been the episode episode that was cut yeah that had to be i didn't even know that dave was gay dave's gay i did say something i think in the first episode maybe i completely flew over my head but Um, that's good that's okay yeah no yeah absolutely i am i just i was like oh okay (laughs) and then and they're kind of rude to him Yes. Because he's basically talking about how, like, he's helping them pick out rings, mm-hmm. but he's also looking because he's going to be getting married. And Amber, the papa's fiance, literally says, like, you'll have to look another day. Oof. Woof. I, yeah, I couldn't believe she said that. She was so nasty. And the ring that she got is not. Not cute. Not cute. And I believe Dave's response was, mine will be bigger and more yeah, beautiful. Mine will be bigger and more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, then uh, CJ goes and chops down some trees to make like decor. I'm like like an arch kind of thing. Yeah, he was um, stoked on. He was like actually doing a good job. Yeah, he was not terrible this episode. He I didn't really say. speak. 
Yeah, which you know, um, that's best. And and like cat, uh, Sam is literally just is watching everyone do work mm-hmm. and asking. In it, she has like a very weird affect to the way she speaks. It's the it's that like, Rhode You're Island decorating the no Sam. Oh God, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sam is watching everybody work. Cat's I'm working. Doing it. Yeah, I don't know why. CJ, because they're both nicknames. I wrote Three down letter short A nicknames. I wrote down that Sam is insufferable. I yeah. She's watching them work and like, oh, you're decorating the top of the bar. Oh, you're da da da. It's, and it's then like she that. Says that kind of up. Uh, I'm I'm motioning yeah, uh-uh. to uh-uh. <laughs> the listeners I'm using my hand and like kind of an up. She yeah. does have a good line after she watches them all work, which is, I'm going to take five. And I mean that in <laughs> island, island time. time. <laughs> and then Adrian, I this kind of stood out to Oof. me for some reason. Like she asked Lee if they could wear a certain type of dress for the women. I, I'm wondering if because it was a wedding, like a like a nautical wedding, they're supposed to wear their white epaulets. Oh, okay. That's a good. So I didn't even think of that. She asked if they could wear the... Armani esque, yeah, black formals. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even consider that. Um, I don't actually know. I'm just, you know, I'm a, an expert at this of the sea, so <laughs> my inference. <laughs> this guy. So going back to the big, the bug man, big bug. He, during their meal, he does not stop talking. At all. And mostly it centers around his line of work. I can't think of a worse topic for meal than bed bugs. <laughs> Fuck my guy. Like, what are we doing? I understand that you have made it big in the bed bug biz. The triple B. But read the room. Read yeah. the room. Not good. <laughs> no, and Ugh. oh my god! Like these people, these people were like harmless. They were fine, but like yeah. one rude, too gross. Like <laughs> very weird. Um, <laughs> and the thing I wrote, I, I wrote about the uh, what uh, when Adrian, <laughs> when Adrian asked about the the dress that could wear. Lee does not care as long as they are wearing the same basically thing. Basically, nothing. No, like he didn't even care that Cat was like tripping on drugs or or <laughs> whatever she was doing. He literally was like, "Thanks for showing me your prescription." Yeah, he looked at the take, prescription and was like, "Take one at a time." Hey, uh, it says uh, don't mix with alcohol, huh? He just <laughs> always cracking wise on uh cat's <laughs> drinking problem. <laughs> yeah. Um and she's like, "Oh yeah." Uh-huh. And um <laughs> so they're I think are they washing? Okay, so the the wedding happens. But before the wedding happens, the they have musicians coming oh to play. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't write this down. And they show up and don't really know where to set up. They don't really know where to plug in. Nothing is like ready for them. And the chief engineer, Nash, he's chief engineer, right? I think. Yeah. The, <laughs> is trying to radio Adrian and she's just over not responding. And over and over. And she's just tuning him out. <laughs> and like, the instant that anyone else radios her, she responds immediately. It, it was, but she responds immediately to say, I'm not helping you. Yeah. Really. No, that's not me. And Nash just, calls her just, an effing bitch in the most – I mean, he was. He was heated. It was – He wanted to, if I can quote Kat, strangle her and make it look like an accident. Make it look like an accident. He was unhappy. I I I would have been unhappy too, I think. I wouldn't – I don't know yeah. if I would have said those words, but it's man, really she rough. is not good with people. And it well, you just, know what she said? That heavy is the head that wears, that wears the, crown the crown sometimes. So that's why nobody likes her, I guess. I think I tuned that out because it was such a ridiculous statement. Here she is, Miss America. Oh, my gosh. So 
they were playing a steel drum version of the, the wedding march? wedding song, That's and funny. I like, timpani. I lost it. I that I <laughs> laughed pretty hard at that. Um, it wasn't as funny as Lee just sticking it to Alex, but it was a close second. <laughs> What did you think of Eddie's weird, like, uh, Elvis Southern Reverend impression? Oh, yeah. Where he was Let's... desperate to, uh, I know, he was desperate to get uh, uh, ordained online and marry them. I thought he was doing an Elvis impersonation, but upon further scrutiny, nope. He was definitely be doing... doing a racist black reverend Just a impersonation. Because t- at first I was like, you, I was like, oh, that's a. Elvis voice, right? And then I went, "Oh, please stop!" No, Ugh. oh no, like that. I can't believe they kept that in. Edward, um, in- insanity to me. That, that, yeah, that would not stay in if it was too, or no. it would, it would get called out if it was mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I would just like to, I mean, not to spoil anything, but stay tuned for the next like ten seasons to see that come first full circle for Eddie. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> so the wedding happens, everything goes nicely. They are done with the charter, their docked charter. Man, I still would be so pissed. Um, I know, I don't know. I guess you're still treated, you know, you're still being served food and being waited <laughs> on. But... Uh, yeah, it's at that point, it's a floating hotel, yeah. Um, so they are gathered around waiting for their tips. They are, you know, we did such a good job. <laughs> My cat almost just fully fell off of the table. Oh, no. Oh, she's okay. Okay, good. She's flats <laughs> these days. So she's like, oh, oh. sorry. I was talking about your cat. <laughs> She clicked something, but I don't know what she clicked. No, you. Uh-uh. I can hear you. I think you're good. Okay. Um, so they're like, "Oh, we're hyped. We gave these people." Okay, wait. Actually, let's rewind a little bit to the cake. <laughs> oh, the whole time they're doing like the setup. Oh. You know, like every single person on the crew is like, "I hope they don't uh, ask for yeah, a cake. They hope. better not ask for a cake. They can't be expecting a cake." Yeah, and they then can't Amber be says, expecting. The, a cake on this 24 hours in advance on a docked <laughs> damn fucking boat wedding. Oh, yeah. I would love a Amber cake. Amber says, could you make a cake? Oh, and Ben just is sitting there going, uh, yeah, I can make a cake. And then so they go. someone? Oh, go ahead. And then they go, oh, yeah, can you make it chocolate? Chocolate would be, be great. <laughs> and he goes, uh-huh. And they're like, yeah, with like white, like white frosting dripping down the sides, and he's just through gritted teeth. <sighs> yeah, I have two questions. One, as someone who is not a, a baker mm-hmm. or nor a chef, mm-hmm. is it really that hard to make a cake for four people? It's when pretty. You're a chef? It's, if you're not a baker, if you are not good at baking, but he's a professional chef. Doesn't matter. Who makes dessert? I mean, he makes dessert. That so. is, that is, if he um, went to culinary school, then yes, he should have some baking he knowledge. He did. Okay. So he should have some baking knowledge. But also, I who's to say he has the ingredients for a cake, you know? Like, okay. he has that big bag of flour, but. Okay. Well, he did because he made it. He did make it, but he was, I think it was just the time investment and how hard it would be. Because, I mean. Yeah, I think like you know. I, don't I have know. another question. Lay it on me. What's is your other question? Is chocolate cake the right choice for a wedding? No, chocolate cake is not a cake. Is not the right it's choice. It's wrong, for a right? It it's should be a light wrong. sheet okay, cake. I will say I'm looking at Chef Ben's like bio on his website, and it says he worked under Italian master chefs in Florence and gained an apprenticeship at a three Michelin star restaurant. So maybe he didn't go to culinary school. Huh. Well, I mean, if it's in Italy, he probably had some baking it training, in, confectionery. He, his, his apprenticeship was in the UK. Oh, well. 
I don't know. Those people eat eels, so I, I can't. <laughs> but eat they do. Eels? Yeah. You, oh, you've never heard of the, the eels that they eat? Well, oh, don't yeah. we eat eel, like in sushi? Oh, no. They're a different eel. I mean, I don't really like that. But okay. Um, <laughs> so UK eels are, <sighs> man, it, it's, like a, it's like a whole thing. They put them... <laughs> They're not. They they look nothing like, and they have nothing to do with the type of eel that we eat. They're basically they're a European eel, um, and they're like kind of like a snake like fish. Um, they're normally around like two to uh, two and a half feet long, <laughs> and <laughs> the British people put them into pies and they bake them. They're so gross. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, they're they're gross. Yes. I'm trying to look up eel pie. If you, yo, eel pie and mash. Mm hmm. They're always eating mash over there. It's like a pot pie. Mm hmm. Hot water crust pie, I believe. Sick. Yeah, not, not great. We digress. It's the best part of the show. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, But yeah, uh, they are super hyped for this tip. They got a cake. They got a wedding. They got a steel drum band. They got the whole nine. No bed bugs. They are saying we're going to have a great tip. Because we gave gave them a wedding in 24 hours. (sighs) Mind you, the bad tip that was given from Adrian's friends was, I think, what, like ten thousand bucks? Mm, I, it was yeah, like ten thousand, like that. And so this is like a two thousand thirteen. Mm-hmm. That was like a two thousand thirteen. These people tipped the crew four thousand dollars for like eleven people. Yeah, that's just that's just cheap. I think that Dave said it's a 9% tip. Yeah. 9% tip for those people that threw together a wedding for you in your tw- wedding. 24 Once in a lifetime, hours. Maybe with captain Lee. Come on. I wonder okay. if he's for hire for weddings. I wonder if captain Lee's on cameo. He's definitely on cameo. I was just thinking that. <laughs> oh, your um, birthday's first. Oh no! <laughs> as long as you can tell me the sun's not shining yet, I'll be happy. Um, but yeah, like man, I, and so it equated about to nine hundred dollars each for eleven people. Captain Lee is probably making. Do you, does he get any of the tip? Or is I think he it just... was less. I think that Dave said nine hundred would be. Oh yeah, a fair tip. Oh my god! It was like less than four hundred per yeah, person. Yeah, you're right. I just did the math. Uh, it's about three hundred and sixty bucks per person. Oof! And that's for cat. Like, that's like oof. a night out drinking and with dinner. <laughs> and <sighs> okay. And I, I just that's insane. If you are. <sighs> Man, I, I just, I was so embarrassed watching that. I know. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, so we get, um, we get a, a next on, next week on, next week's oh, episode. Wait, wait. Oh, wait. But before, but at the end of the episode, they're all just hanging out on the boat drinking. Oh, yeah, okay. Cat Kat is being like the meanest person alive. I I was very uncomfortable with that, which is why I I think I forgot to write anything down. <laughs> she keeps she's really wants to switch cabins with mm-hmm. someone, and no one wants to switch with her, and she's doing it all behind Adrian's back. Mm-hmm. And Adrian comes up, and the vibe is not great with Cat. Cat just immediately starts being super rude to her. Mm-hmm. And just saying just some really not kind stuff. Like, it'd be one thing if 
you know, Kat, like if Cat was like on the up and up the whole time, and Adrian was still just being whatever to her, to her, but like Cat is just being pretty nasty, and like not really making a lot of sense. Just no. kind of being like loud and a little bit probably drunk and obnoxious. And then we get Adrian, Adrian like, like crying, really sobbing. Yeah, her like Lauren Conrad mascara tears. <laughs> And I felt really bad for her. I felt I felt really bad for her too. Like she clearly this is when I realized that this is like the first time that she's like ever managing people, especially people yeah. that she's kind of like friends with. And that's always a hard position especially for or for anybody and especially you know, somebody who's in her position and Mm -hmm. is, has a, has an alliance working against her. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, we get a next week on that continues the story of the, um, of the, uh, the, the, the bunk switching and everything like that. Like, Oh man, I just felt, I felt I feel bad for her, and I never thought I would feel bad for her. <laughs> Same. Same. Um, I'm there gonna can be a- truths, multiple truths, right? That's true. That is true. <laughs> like she can be a bad boss, and also, yeah, you can have sympathy. Cat, yeah, and Cat can be treating her like crap. Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to ask you something right off the uh, kind of kind of random that you're not prepared for. Who is your MVP of this episode? I think it's going to have to be CJ for building that thing Yeah, out of palm fronds and, and not complaining. He was like, this is what yachties do. I love this. Yeah. yeah. I was so surprised that he did not have just in like an insane statement that I was grossed <laughs> out at. I, like I mean, asking Sam to marry him or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I watched a little bit of next week and I have questions. Um, from next week, uh, but we'll save that. My MVP of the show, uh, Captain Lee. I mean oh, that natu- remark. I that mean, remark. Naturally, I'm sorry. Like that remark. I mean, he's always the MVP. Number right. one in our number one on our uh, score sheet. Number one in our heart. But <laughs> man, just that sick. Yeah, that burn. was a good one. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, the sun ain't shining in here. <laughs> the sun ain't shining in here. Uh, next week, we will be back with an episode called Naughty Yachties. And mm-hmm. I cannot wait. So thank you for listening. We'll catch you later. Thanks. Mm-hmm.